Summertime greetings, everybody, from sunny Spirit Lake, Iowa. Tom Matuska here for the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, along with Brett Wingfield. And uh, um, the ice cream man came today. Yes, he I did. I said, we're, we got to stop this day. weather report every time <laughs> in the beginning of the show. Um, so we stopped the weather report. But the ice cream man did come. And uh, root beer floats all around. So good days. It's a good, good, place, day. good place to work if you ever want a good job and get... <laughs> ice cream root beer floats this is a place for you um, if you joined us last week we uh, began our bobcat career and uh, this will go on for many segments by the time we get the bobcat done when we only work you know an hour an hour per session and uh, bobcats take a lot of work mm -hmm. and it's not something you can throw together and make them look like a bobcat uh, Last week, we took a commercial mannequin, yep. showed you that. You can look back in our archives on YouTube or on our Facebook Live, mm -hmm. and uh, you can look at how we started with the bobcat. It was a bobcat mannequin of our own, mm -hmm. and you never know what the sculptor knew. There's a lot of forms on the market mm -hmm. that, that were not, I guess, properly sculpted, and sometimes the sculptors, I guess I'd for lack of a better word, wing it as far as proportions and lengths and circumferences yeah. and things like that. Um, done right, uh, if, you're, if your measurements match, your mannequin is gonna be in the ballpark pretty close with minimum yeah. amount of uh, um, you know, extensions or compressions or making them bigger or smaller in the belly. So we checked our Bobcat and according to the measurements, we were uh, maybe a couple inches on the short side but everything else matched up, I think. Yeah. And um, ours came with the legs not attached, which mm -hmm. made it very easy. You showed them how to stick the body up through the case incision. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes the heads on those big toms are so big that you can't get them through the neck. Um, we don't have a problem of cutting the head off. And we a lot of times cut it in a V so that it'll index back into the same spot. And you can feed the head through the open mouth, you know, through the mouth skin, provided you flesh that really well. Um, the body fit really good. We could use that inch of length. So mm -hmm. we intended to put that back on. Um, when the legs were inserted, they all fit really nicely also. Yeah, so then we talked about either buying the size you need, making it into the pose the customer wants, or buying the pose the customer wants and increasing or decreasing the size. And so that's kind of your two choices. And we decided to go with a bobcat that fit quite well and then yeah. make him into the pose. And I think when we left you um, last week, um, we were starting to cut parts of him up yeah. apart and turn him. Um, we had a picture that the customer liked of another mount and um, we think we can copy that quite well and make it better. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is going to be a really nice bobcat. So as you can see, um, we started cutting because he, we turned him with our habitat. Um, we cut a pie shape out of this portion and then we made a relief cut on the other side so he bends a little bit but you got to be careful because he's got a whole string of vertebrae vertebrae every one of them is turning a couple degrees couple degrees couple degrees couple degrees if you just did one or two you're going to get kinks in your cat and you don't want a cat with kinks <laughs> so make sure that you don't don't be afraid to add more till you get a really nice smooth yeah. um, don't forget that your your neck and head is going to account for some also and we just had him kind of playing with him we just kept holding him up there turning him putting yeah. screws in as we cut the v's out out of the pie shapes out put screws in you can always tighten in those screws or loosen yeah. them and spread him out tighten him up make a make a you know, more of a curve to him. Accordion effect. Out yeah, of yeah, that's exactly right. Just like yeah. an accordion. Yeah. I went in Mandy's office looking for a Barbie yeah. doll because um, these animals will articulate kind of like a yeah. Barbie doll has the joints in the right yeah. places. Um, would you show them, I brought you a pen to show them uh -oh. 
just for instance on that front leg where that cat can bend. Some people do, yeah. do um, I guess, bend legs in the wrong places and yeah. that's really important that you get the joints yeah. in the right places. Yep, we see that often that easy alterations sometimes cut corners and don't move things where joints can bend. So um, there's a whole bunch of them. You should show them your, our, the book. Um, that Atlas of Animal Anatomy is probably the very best resource you'll have um, when doing any alteration work like that. But um, we rotated this leg to bring it further forward. And we did that just by taking the whole leg, which came separate from, separate from the mount, um, and just rotated it. So we felt like because the shoulder would turn um, here, and you would have the scapula here, um, we could rotate this and still have some options. So if we need to bend this and change the shoulder, we would make a cut across so that it changes at that joint, or the elbow here, or the wrist here, or down here at the fingers, or here at this joint. Um, several points that it can turn. And you've got a few cuts made on this other leg at those points. Um, just to start getting this leg to conform, we've still got to bring his body forward and do some things like that. But if we needed to move this leg, which we may choose to actually foam over some of this and re-sculpt the anatomy, um, but this is where we would cut and turn that. And you're talking about the Atlas of um, Animal Anatomy, and I think that might be our giveaway today. Is that correct? Um, this is probably one of the best mammal books that we have in our shop. Yeah. Um, we don't get into very many sculpture projects like this without having this yeah. book open. Um, it's got several different specimens in here. Um, this is an African lion, and I'm sure there's a thousand people out there going to disagree with me, but um, <laughs> when I'm working on a bobcat, I'm going to have yeah. my African lion book open. When yeah. I'm working on a wolf, I'm going to have my dog you yeah. know, open because it's yeah. so similar, different but so similar. But uh, um, it's got, it, it shows you the bone, the skeletal makeup. It shows you the musculature makeup. Um, it has um, front poses, rear poses. Um, it's got all different kinds of creatures. Um, there's dog. It's got deer. It's got horses. Um, a lot of different animals. It's got, uh, you know, the deer would be great for even working on a, you know, a, an elk as far as the skeletal makeup. Yes, the elk's bones are going to be bigger. Um, more massive, they're still going to bend yeah. in a very similar place. But Atlas of Animal Anatomy um, is a great book, and we couldn't do life-size mammals very accurately without this. Um, so that's a good one to have in your library that you're, um, you're always going to have. Another thing, the better taxidermists that I know, taxidermists are a morbid little creature to begin <laughs> with, you know, but um, you will see a lot of above average taxidermists that have skeletons, um, sure. cleaned, clean bones, yeah. clean leg bones with the scapular attached, wired together. Um, if bobcats are your thing or raccoons or whatever, um, you would do well to clean the bones, clean them up real good, wire them together so that you could still bend them. And when you're working on something like this, um, if you're gonna hunch up a leg, you know, like he's climbing down, take your skeleton, your bone, take yeah. your femur and, and your tibia and bend those up into a pose that you're after and see maybe this knee is like way down low yeah. and in real life it's got to be up here because it's attached to the, the hip. hip. Yeah. So don't be afraid to, you know, clean some of those bones and just yeah. keep them. We have a lot of, we have lots of that stuff around yeah. here. And you don't have to have one for every animal either. Um, right. A, a, one bobcat, like you said, would serve your African lion. It would serve your lynx and everything else mm -hmm. too. So. What you got? All right, we've got a few people tuning in. So hello, everybody that's tuning in. We do have a question from Michael Sears. And Michael would like to know, would a carcass be a better option 
when there's that level of alteration needed done. Sure, and I think he's probably talking about carcass cast. Carcass cast, maybe. Um, um, carcass casts are great, and especially for people who aren't familiar with the animal that they're doing. Yeah. Um, a carcass cast is basically taking the carcass and making a mold yeah. of it, um, taking that mold, making a positive of that mold, which yeah. is the part that's gonna look like the bobcat, and use that for your reference. Yeah. Um, when we um, embarked on sculpting bobcats, yeah. we had several prime prime specimens in sizes that we thought we could use, um, we are lucky enough to have a walk-in freezer. So we would skin them as carefully as we can as not to damage the carcass, and then we would pose that carcass. We made little uh, two by two wood posts, yeah. little bridge affair, and we would, we would put wires through the spine to hold the body the way we wanted. You know, like I said, we're morbid little creatures, <laughs> but we could pose that animal just the way we wanted, and then um, even the legs. We would have the legs up. If it was jumping after a, you know, a pheasant, you could have him, yeah. you know, paws up. And with the real carcass, nice. you can get much more accurate and lifelike than you can working with hard foam. Yeah. And then we took our carcasses and encased them in bondo, right? Yeah. Um, Gave them a nice coat of three inch bondo over the entire carcass. Frozen carcass. Frozen carcass yeah. in the freezer as they f we put the whole scaffolding affair in the freezer and as they hardened, you were able to pose them before they mm -hmm. turned into like a rock. Once yeah. they froze, if we didn't like something, we'd thaw out that portion and adjust it, and then we just coated the whole um, carcass in auto body putty, and then we cut it off, took the pieces apart, and yeah. used those. We made them out of clay. Yeah, yeah. It worked real to good. We're not, not done with that project no, yet. No, I think there's still some carcasses <laughs> in Bondo that have never been taken out of Bondo. But if you've never freezer. done that before, um, try it. My first one was, I was a taxidermist 15 minutes when I got a weasel, and I skinned a weasel, and I made sure. a plaster mold. The weasel weighed an ounce and a half, the plaster mold weighed 10 pounds, <laughs> um, but I made my very first carcass cast in yeah. which I put latex rubber in and baked it in the oven and I had a oh, very a first flexible mold, mold anybody had ever seen. <laughs> but uh, I'm funny. not sure that's what he's referring to, but that's what I thought of yeah. a carcass cast. Carcass yeah, I think so. parts are very accurate to go by. Um, and, and two, just talking about the carcass process, um, you still, even though we have all those joints and it was the carcass that came out of the animal, you still have to rework the positive. We spent a lot of time with that clay part and that's why we made it out of clay, was to bring the life back to it because in death, a lot of those muscle structures sag and, and it's great, um, kind of like a reproduction fish. If, if you made a mold of a perfect fish, it's going to be make a great cast, but an old dead fish looks like an old dead fish, so still got to work on that. And it was a carcass cast. So. It was, good. Um, carcass crafts are great, and once you have that carcass cast, um, you can make the, I mean, you can, we got a whole wall up here of carcass casts. We have faces and fish and bird parts and all kinds of things. We have a whole um, maybe you can get a shot of our wall up there, Caitlin. Um, take a picture of the carcass cast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we use yeah. these every single day. We do. Um, we do. We there have uh, everything under the sun up there. Fish and birds and all kinds of. But elk. it's kind of handy. We have a whole wall full. Elk and bears. Yes, I we do. I think there's a. We have boxes. Crocodile. Boxes. We have a oh, crocodile. Yeah. I don't um, see the crocodile. Um, and then you got to decide as you're doing this, what are you thinking of as far as uh, base? You know, you have to yeah. kind of work the two parts in correlation with each other. And you don't need a place for every foot. We can always add that, but at least um, he's coming downhill. The customer wanted him coming downhill. So we had. Uh, this rock base that went with our 
original Bobcat, yeah. and was he going the other way? He's going the other way? Yeah. And we yeah. turned this one going the opposite way, and yeah. then we tipped the base down, and yeah. coincidentally, it happened to work that that branch fit, but don't yeah. be afraid to use, um, you can get a, I mean, a lot of supply companies have a lot of selection of bases, yeah. but you can incorporate real wood and um, we use our, a lot of artificial rocks. These are foam rocks, yeah. heavy foam rocks. Yeah. I got to bet Mandy again, she's probably forget a, forgot about our steak supper bet. About driving, driving over, over the... it. You can drive <laughs> over our rocks and you will not hurt your car. And you won't hurt you the rock. You might hurt your car, <laughs> but not the rock. Um, but you can take things like this, and, and if, uh, if this didn't happen to match up, you could either cut that and use the foam, or you could you know, screw that on. You can add all kinds of um, real components to your base work and for a little bit of realism. And those, when all of those things are done in conjunction with each other, you can really make some artsy, nice pieces, but you can also tell the ones that get built after the cat's mounted, they look like they were made as afterthoughts. So um, now is definitely the time to think about habitat while you're making these alterations. We have a good example of that in that hind leg back there. If we bring him up here where he's level and his body is square, our hind leg is up about an inch. So we could either add habitat or change the stretch his leg the out pose. a little bit. Too, yeah, yeah. Drop, the, drop the leg. Um, but. Something else is that I would is kind of important and I learned a long time ago. Um, I always try to find out where it's going to be, especially wall hangings. Yeah. Um, if it's a pedestal, um, we just did that nice elk pedestal mm -hmm. and if you can get those animals faces eye level they look much Makes better than if you're looking down or if you're looking up yeah. you know you see yeah. some some mounts that different people have done and they're very high and the proportions yeah. look fun look skewed and or if they're too low so eye level works well and then also um, a lot of these customers have great big trophy rooms or maybe little trophy rooms, but depending on where this hangs, if it can make eye contact with the viewer, yeah. your taxidermy work looks so much nicer. So I like to find out in a room um, how big the room is, where the main activity of the room is, and how high they plan on hanging yeah, it that's because if I know this is going to be a small room and he's going to be hung eight foot off the floor, I'm going to direct that head down into the where it's eye level, six feet off the floor. So yeah. people kind of make eye contact with it and that's what makes your taxidermy work yeah. come alive. I did a, uh, a nice mountain lion that was shot by a, with a, by a bow hunter one time, a uh, man's wife. And, uh, they told me how high it was going to be off the wall, but they didn't tell me how narrow the room was going to be. Oh. And so as far away as they could get, they could get eight feet from the animal and he was looking oh, right look over their looking. head. So as you're looking at this, you turn around to see what he's looking at because <laughs> he's not making eye contact. Yeah. So yeah. Um, customers will appreciate that if you take an interest in as far as where it's going on the wall. Mm -hmm. Also, if it's going to be way over to that side, you want him looking this way. If he's going to be there, you want him looking back this way. So by, by choosing or putting a little thought into it, you can make your taxidermy work look a lot nicer. Big difference, yeah. Yep. No questions? No questions. No, good. <laughs> okay, um, so now when we left you um, last week, we had cut some of the body I think so, yeah. Angles out and put them together. And we put them together with just uh, torque head screws. Yep. And if, if we're doing something big, we do you know, some pretty big projects, this isn't gonna hold it. So we'll use um, landscape screws. We have some landscape screws that are a foot long okay. and they work on little hex head drivers and those work really, really well. So have yourself a nice selection of screws, use them over and over, don't throw them away. We're gonna take them out of this animal. Um, so then you worked on the legs a little bit when you were off camera. Of 
and I yeah. think you foamed a little bit on the back side, did you? Yep, just, and, just enough to tack them together. So once you're happy, don't, don't try to do the whole thing at one time. This deal with just the body, you know, or just a leg, yeah. you know, don't get overwhelmed with trying to put the whole thing together. So do we want to show them yeah. um, how to foam a little bit on the body? Yeah. Now we can always, the legs aren't real sturdy yet, um, and we'll put them right back where they are. They may move on us as we go. Just held him there with a screw in the top of the foot, and then we've got a T-pin in this other foot here just to help hold him in place but showing the back side how um, you poured this afternoon or this afternoon or yesterday, yesterday. Um, foam in the V now be careful when you do that too because you could and foam expands yeah. it can make him start curving more than you wanted to but that's holding all of this together and you don't have to worry about it falling apart yeah and that's why we didn't put this under pressure, we sometimes will wrap a bag around them and it'll hold it tight and you don't have near as much hanging out there, but we didn't want to put it, um, compress that foam so it started pushing things. Um, th this is just a little bit to tack it together. We usually do that. We'll tack things together first, look at it, and then once that's we're really- That's because we're not quite sure. <laughs> that's right. Um, but once we're really sure we like it, then we'll foam it all together. So um, that's where we are now. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, to tell you a little bit about the foam, um, we have a couple different foams that we use here. We have a three pound mannequin foam, which all of our mannequins are made of. And um, when it's not under pressure, like in a mold, um, you're gonna get a three and a half pound density foam. It's gonna be kind of firm and kind of strong um, and supportive. When it's free flowing like this, going to be a little less. It's yeah. going to be more of a two and a half. Yeah. And so that is, when you say three and a half pounds, how do they measure that? How do people know what that means? One cubic foot of a three pound foam will weigh three pounds. And it's an approximate. It's two, yeah. I think ours is 2.6 to 3.2. Yeah. Um, we also have a 10 pound density yeah. foam. And our 10 pound density foam, we make a lot of our habitat out of 10 pound density foam. That's why I said, you can drive over this. This yeah. will hold a bolt. It's super, super strong. Um, you can add something like this into here and screw it right in and, and it's gonna be real strong. Just like screwing two boards together. Yeah, very strong. Um, 10 pound density foam, I guess, is gonna expand a third of what three yeah. pound density foam is. So if you have an area, say you have a big base like this, we have a walleye base that we've been working on. If we wanted to cover that with ground cover with foam, yeah. three pound density foam would be good. Um, it's gonna cover a lot and it's gonna rise up. 10 yeah. pound density foam does not expand near what three does right. and you're gonna have hundred and some dollars worth of foam and you're gonna have half your base yeah. done. Yep, so that same one by one by one cube ten pounds. is gonna weigh 10 pounds, yep. so a lot less air in yep. it, so yeah. James Caldwell would like to know, do you plan ahead and charge accordingly for projects where you do more alteration or just a flat rate? No, I think you're gonna wanna, it depends, but we, we alter everything. everything um, yeah. When I look around the shop, I mean, um, I'm looking at a kudu pedestal that's altered. I'm looking at a zebra that's altered. I'm looking at a wildebeest that's altered. Um, everything. Sable. Um, the sable's altered. There's nothing, another bobcat. Everything we do, we yeah. chop and put together. And it's kind of second nature to us. We have no problem grabbing the sawzall and moving ahead. It took us 20 minutes, and I'd have to say we don't charge for that. Yeah. Um, if a customer but, comes in and he shows us a picture and we go, we know we can't find that anywhere, we're going to have to make it. And it's going to be kind of time and materials. It's going to be the, the bobcat mount plus, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so you should get charged for it, or, or you should charge for it. 
Um, we a lot of times don't because we have a sawzall in our hand 90% of the time in the shop. Yeah. And I think we probably factor in a couple hours into most of our projects yep, yep, anyway yep. in that base price. So we know we're going to do those alterations. Even when something so. fits like a glove, it really never fits yeah, like a glove. You're going to have you know. some work to do. I mean, you, it's, it's kind of rare. Yeah. Yep. And if, if by chance it accidentally fit one right out of the catalog, we you give money back, that. right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we buy an ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so. I have the three pound density foam. You got an A and a B. Um, it's really meant to be weighed by the, by the mm -hmm. ounce to mix to get the proper mix. Ours is close enough that I'm gonna take a little bit in the cup here and an equal amount in the other cup, yeah. mix them together and call it good. Um, we do notice when we get in a hurry, sometimes we get a spongy foam, you know, not very often that you have to dig out or something, but typically it's meant to be weighed. We don't weigh it. We do it by volume. And it's kind of a feel for how much it's going to expand. You'll you'll just kind of have to play with that. For those of you that haven't, some of you this is old hat and you do it every day too, so. Um, this, yeah, when you get foam, or uh, we, we field these calls every single day, um, whether it's foam or whether it's artificial water or whether it's any kind of a product we use, um, we get calls that people got it and all of a sudden they're putting it on their project right away. Um, do a little test yes. first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all you have to do is take um, a half a cup of this, you didn't waste very much, half a cup, mix it up, and you go, oh, that's what it does. Yeah. And you know that it took, it took oh. 32 seconds before it started rising and you know that the cup's warm and you know that it hardens. <laughs> you know, one little test tells you a whole lot. Uh, so, yes. Always test. Um, test, test, test. And I'm just gonna take, um, I'm gonna mix this and give it to you. Oh, so be okay. ready. <laughs> That's um, good to know. Um, just an A and a B. I'm gonna, now you have 30 seconds before it starts going or maybe a little more. And sometimes it's nice to wait until, depending upon when you, or what your intention is, if you need to fill a space um, very tightly, it might be nice to pour it really liquid. But on the other hand, um, sometimes if you just mix it and pour it right away and it's really liquidy, it's all gonna run off. So sometimes it's nice to um, mix it and then let it sit for a second, let it start to expand before we start to pour it. Now we have people sometimes and we say, okay, mix it up. And they're doing something like, you know, <laughs> slow like this. No, we want to whip. Whip, whip, whip. Yeah. And when we make large amounts, um, like big bases or big fills, um, we'll even use a drill with a yes, a hoop yep. on a wire with tape on it to make a paddle. Yeah. And you really only have. I want a nice creamy butterscotch color. This is a little lighter than butterscotch. And you can hold that and talk to them while it's foaming. Don't drink it. That'd do you in, wouldn't it? Oh my it? goodness. Put it in somebody's gas tank. Um, so should I fill in on the front side? Sure. We'll show them kind of a little bit of, we're gonna fill some of those voids. So remember we took a, a wedge out of one side and articulated him, which created a space on the front. Um, I'm just, I don't know, Kate, you may not see this. Um, we're just starting to expand. I'm gonna let it just kind of run out of the cup. And I don't want to over pour, but at the same time, we really don't want to under pour either because then you end up just having to come back. So if it flows out here and uh, covers some space, that's, that's all right. Um, try not to cover up all your screw heads. Some of them will. Um, I might tack this front leg in place too. That one hadn't been tacked in yet. But. And you're not gonna get it all in one pour. Just plan yeah. on. Yeah. Um, getting him held together, trim it off, and come in and patch the spots that need it. Yeah. Now again, we could um, surround this with a plastic bag and pour into the bag and, and put it under pressure. We could do that. 
Um, it wouldn't spill quite as much. Um, but better for you to see how much expans expansion you're getting out of your foam and what it's doing. Um, it's nice to be able to show you, for you guys to see that. Um, still, still liquidy. Now, one thing that's really important, and I see a lot of people do this, um, this foam has air in it, and that's what makes it nice and fluffy and rise like it does. But if we take it, I'll pour some out here on the table. And if we take this foam now, and we were, say you had a little crack that hadn't filled, and you try to manipulate it, see how it flattens out, and all of a sudden we're not, we're taking all of the air out of it. At some point, you can do this a little bit to manipulate it, but once it starts to foam, it's gonna get really hard and really dense. This right here where I've worked that is gonna be just like plastic. There's no more air in it. So when you go to sand it and hit it with a, with a rougher, um, those hard spots are terribly difficult to So if you smooth this through. all out and then yep. tried to rasp it or carve it, it's gonna be yeah. different than the foam. Yep, if we smoothed it out now while it's still expanding and took the expansion out of it, um, it would be very difficult. So at this point, we wanna just let it go. Um, you'll feel that he's starting to get warm. Um, that's another thing too, um, to tell them, if, those of you that haven't worked with foam, um, the temperature makes a big difference. So if this foam just came off of a truck and it's winter time, you just got it off the UPS truck and it's cold. 50 degrees yep. cold, um, it's going to take a long time for it to expand. Same thing in the summer. If it was sitting in 100 degree weather out on your porch and, oh no, I got to make that base or that pour that grizzly bear, you might have foam on the ceiling. We've um, done that. <laughs> we have done that. We, we, we've had lots of fun <laughs> foam, foam things experience. happen. experience, yeah. Okay, and as this sets up, you can touch it with your finger. Um, it's still really sticky and goopy, so, so don't grab on anything. Um, yeah. But shortly, it's gonna be rubbery, and I can, I can touch it, and then as it cools, goes through its cooling stage, we'll be able to carve it, rasp um, it, um, saw it with your little Irwin saw. Yeah, um, that's the nicest. When it's still warm, um, it's really nice to cut. It shaves really nice, a good sharp knife. You can make short work of foam. Um, also, let it sit uh, um, and harden up, and it will take a little more work to get And it rasps trimmed. real nice. Yeah. yeah. So when we can, now, now I can touch it. But it's, so it's nice and warm. Yeah, skinned over. Not, not gonna come off on your, on your hands, but it's still and steel do you want real more rubbery. Or do you want to stop there? Um, up to you. Should we stop and carve? Okay. What's or should we pour one more time? One more time. Okay. <laughs> we'll get farther. I'll mix very quickly. He is attached to the table from a little overflow here, so I'm going to cut him free from the table. You pour this and I'll go grab a little saw. You got your knife, I think? Yeah. yeah. And that's what happens when it's not quite hardened and you try to move it. <laughs> so we're just going to turn him now and expose a few more of those voids. You. You want to pour for them. That That's that fresh foam we just poured. It's still really hot. He's got some voids here in the belly. Now, if you um, see those. if you attach him where you didn't want to attach him quite yet, um, we just cut him apart and do it again. Not coming apart now. <laughs> nope, we're committed. Committed as far as we have to go. Um, we also should mention too, some of them saw last week, some of them might be just picking it up this week. 
Um, we ordered this mannequin um, without wires or rods, and that makes altering much, much easier. We're going to install those later, um, and we'll show you how to do that. But I haven't been in it to the um, head yet. Oh. Yeah, probably not. And that's a good point. We've, we've uh, cut through enough big animal rods on big life-size bears and lions and things like that to where um, you, uh, I mean, some of those rods are three quarters oh, of an inch thick. Sheep and legs. once you cut through them, then they're in there. Now what do you do with them? And when you try to pin things, you're hitting the rods. So we like to put our rods in ourselves, like you said. And um, it's kind of intimidating at first. You'll think, oh my gosh, this is a big job, but it's not at all. It's, you'll yeah, come up with a good system. It will save you time, just time and headache. Um, to order without rods. And you know, any of these, this could be an elk or a sheep or an elephant. Um, the principle all applies the same, um, but don't start with a life-size elk or a moose to start all your first alterations on. A bobcat would make a really good one, um, a fox. We have a sign over here that says, don't start um, oh. vast projects with half vast ideas. <laughs> Yes. And that's been there for that 30 is, some years. That, that has been a motto. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had some half vast yes, ideas. There's been some vast and a half ideas too. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, but don't be afraid to make some alterations. Get into, um, get yourself familiar with foam. Um, we're altering with foam. You don't have to alter with foam. You could alter with, some people make minor alterations with Bondo. Sure. Um, that works. Um, you could make alterations with... Um, is plaster, Bondo, yeah. mache. Yep, boxies, you know. anything, anything to fill those spaces and voids. Foam works We just really want to well make sure we can poke pins in yeah. it and carve and things like that. Yeah. Got Tara Radovan, and Tara would like to Tara. know. <laughs> Hi, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Question for you: How come you don't tape it so it doesn't leak? We Sorry. could do that. We could. It's sitting on the table. Um, we've done that. Yeah, we got tape right here. Yeah. Um, incidentally, the best duct tape ever is not duct tape at all. It's Gorilla <laughs> Tape. Um, we love Gorilla Tape, but uh, we've done that, and um, we were mentioning that earlier. We screwed the bobcat together. And, and we've taped it around yeah. and around, and then we leave the flap of the tape up, pour our foam in, and seal it. Yeah. Um, that works really good. You want to be very careful that the foam doesn't create too much pressure to blow your animal apart. We've done yeah. that also. That's, that's probably the biggest one I can think of, is just not putting any pressure on it. Um, will you stretch wrap? That's another, that's another yeah, sure. great tool. Um, stretch wrap to um, put those together wrap and them contain around, yeah. your We've used cardboard, we've used, you know, everything, um, but. This won't take much to um, trim it up and, and sand it, so we could, definitely a good point. Yeah. Now that foam got so hot that the wax on this wax cup is yeah. Yeah. liquid on the outside. Yeah, melty, melty. I remember somebody one time, all the, all the foams have changed over the years. Um, the foam we have today is not like the foam we had 20 years ago. Um, it all reacts different, but it used to get really, really hot. And we had the bright idea of putting on a rubber glove and mixing the foam with rubber glove. And it gets really hot. <laughs> yes, it does. Are we ready to unscrew some things? Um, quite possibly. I bet there's a few that can come apart. There's some sticky spots still. So now, once he's, normally, if we weren't doing the show, we would walk away from this um, yeah. rather than, than ruin the project. But uh, now we start taking out all the, all the screws that we can, um, just one at a time, put them back in your little screw box, and uh, then it's time to start shaping your foam. Those four inch torque head screws are Darn near a buck a piece. You bend over to pick them up anymore. <laughs> yes, we didn't used to do. with the Phillips. We didn't used to. They got you swept up and in the garbage Facebook. sometimes. Uh, I 
another thing to um, also consider is that when you have, anytime you've got surfaces that have come out of a mold, um, there's probably mold release on those parts. So it's not a bad idea to come in with your form rougher if you're trying to foam something, one surface to an area that's not a cut surface. Um, it's not a bad idea to rough it up a little bit before you pour foam. Um, we have some of that already in here that's already been done off camera. Tara says, Thank you. Not sure how I feel that they both giggled when hearing my name. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice giggle. That was a warm, fuzzy giggle. <laughs> we just wanted to make sure we weren't going to get censored on Facebook. And some of these, like, like this foamed up so much that we have to, I'm not going to get it out now. Not going to get that one out with that drill bit. This one? Um, yeah. Oh, too big. There might be some smaller Two big heads in there. Um, here, I got one. Good for now. That one. That one. And there will be some that you're not gonna get. You're gonna have to carve a little bit and come back and get them later. Um, there will be little little holes in your foam. And yeah, that one will have to get later. Michael Sear says, modern taxidermist tip, save those nubs of foam that expand in your mixing cups. They can be used, or they can be made into nice, lightweight habitat. There you go. Um, can be yeah, used to absolutely. make what? Habitat. Uh, lightweight habitat. Oh, sure. Um, I'm going to, since we have just a second, this is some of that foam that I pushed all of the air out of. and. I can't hardly get a knife through it. There, I got it to break, but um, very, very, very hard. So you don't want to have, you don't want to knock the air out of your foam. Um, we used to, speaking of, you know, not wasting this stuff, and I think that's going to get more important than ever oh, in yeah. the upcoming months, yeah, seems like. Right. But uh, we used to have big voids to fill. Like, say you're um, filling maybe half a bushel basket of a bear, you yeah. know, that, and you've got it all taped up or whatever. Um, we throw this stuff right in our bucket. Save, save these chunks of foam. They will mix with your liquid and you'll never be able to find these. They, yeah. they pour them right in, works good. Yeah. We used to take all of our big alterations and we just cut up every little chunk of foam we had because we didn't have totes sure. to get our foam out yeah. of. We had to get it out of a little gallon jug yeah. that we just ordered yesterday. So we had to make it go yeah. a long ways, but we saved all of that stuff. Yeah. It worked yeah. really well. What so, do you think? Well, next I would carve a little bit, I think, and mm -hmm. um, different tools. We like to, our Sawzall, our um, yeah. little Milwaukee Sawzall, and there's a, a small, um, 12 volt battery is it the little ones the 12 volt yeah, I think battery so. the and hall. yeah and that works really well um, you showed them the Irwin saw yeah I last really like week that. and um, I mean that's just a hand I mean, you can use a knife if this stuff is soft enough otherwise um, a little saw like this just to get down to the animal side There's no rules. And just get it, get it flush.
So now you're just kind of knocking off the big stuff. The big stuff, yeah. And then, once you've got it that far, um, a, we call it a form rasp. It's, I think, a, a sheetrock tool. Um, that works really well. And you want to make sure that you have a nice contour to the skin that's going to feel good under the, you know, under the skin, yeah. contour to the form, the body that's going to feel good under the skin. Kind of like that. Um, another uh, piece of equipment we use a lot, I like the Cutsaw Rasp. Those and, are great, um, yes. These work good. They come in, a, I think, a fine and a coarse. And um, we use a coarse a lot. Um, you fish tax thermos. Would love these too. They work mm -hmm. good on, on soft Absolutely. fish foam bodies. Um, they work good on this kind of foam. They work good on all terrain, you know, get, cutting through a crust. They yeah. work really yeah. nice. Defining muscle tone detail in, in foam. And when they get crusty and filled, we use them on Bondo all the time. So when mm -hmm. they get, same with, same with these, when they get all caked with Bondo and they won't cut anymore, um, this one has a handle on, you'll have to take the handle off, but we just put them in a little lacquer thinner overnight mm -hmm. and they come out like they just came out of the package the next yeah. day, come out real nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, they'll last forever and man, they're that's a tool I wouldn't want to have. That's my, well, that's my go-to tool all yeah. the time. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with, with him. We'll do this when you guys are all sleeping tonight. And uh, <laughs> we're going to take care of the body. We're going to fill in the gaps in the, on the, in the legs. We're going to shape any of this that needs to be shaped. Our, our hip doesn't align with our, our calf here. And um, get him looking a little bobcatty. And then... Um, we're probably going to have to take some legs off to make him fit again in, up in your yeah, skin. Yeah, yep. we'll have to look at um, how we want to, our skin is just case skinned. So whether we cut the skin or we cut the cat, I think now we're going to I like what you did last them. time. That was nice. We could have <laughs> had that cat mounted fast. But um, yeah, we'll have to make some determinations and we'll level the head. We'll get him up on the base and make sure that the base is level and Gosh, that's another thing to really, really reiterate is that make sure when you're doing any of these alterations, it seems like common sense or seems simple, but make sure if you have a wall mount that your base is level on the back exactly how it's going to hang on the wall because if it's the base is canted up and you level your bobcat and get him all set up and then go to hang it on the wall. Or you're going to be shimming up legs. Yeah. You're going to yeah. put rocks shimming or corn legs cobs under and, his legs. Yep. Yep, make a lot more work for yourself if so, you don't. So. so now we had a student years ago that he wanted everything to look factory. And factory was his term for kind of perfect like it should yeah. be. So we're going to make this bobcat. By the time we get done, he's going to look factory. factory. <laughs> and uh, once we have the mannequin to what we think's done, um, and we'll have that by next week, then we're going to... Um, Test fit him really good, yeah. make sure, because we did add, um, we added, oh, maybe an inch, inch and maybe a little, little bit more. Inch, yep. And uh, so we did add, which we thought we needed, and we'll get some eyes and ears, and we'll get mm -hmm. the mannequin set up just like a naked cat. Yep. yep. Um, our hide is tanned and in the freezer, waiting yep. for the next step. And I think, um, I haven't checked on the availability of... Uh, Reflective eyes. I think we're going to use reflective eyes. Do we Maybe. have them? I hope so. <laughs> um, that varies from day to day. The I don't know if the so, Ukrainians will let the eye shipment out. I know. I know. Okay. Um, but um, and uh, so little by little, we're going to get him. I think he had the idea. We didn't. Nothing was rocket science that we did. We kind of tried to keep keep the proportions um, looking. All we really did was turn him, added mm -hmm. just a little bit of length, um, posed his legs to fit this. So any of you can do that. That's not, yeah. it's not difficult. Yeah. And um, 
So we'll have him looking better by next week and looking more commercial, I guess. Factory. And then, uh, factory. Yes, go look factory. And uh, then we'll proceed with mountaining, which will probably be another another couple sessions, and then we'll have to have a finish, finish work. But um, that's how we do it. And it doesn't matter, like you said, if it's, um, we did this with a crocodile. We did. Uh, big crocodile. <laughs> did a um, lot more pieces. Leopards, lions, mm -hmm. Cape Buffalo, it doesn't matter. However, it's just bigger. Yeah. Bigger, yeah. and this won't do it. When you get yeah. into bigger, you're yeah. gonna need bigger saws. Um, yeah. I remember doing the steer, and that was one of my first big, oh, big yeah. projects. I used sure. a chainsaw to cut the mannequin yeah. apart. So bigger yeah. machinery. But. Yeah. Okay, that's it for today. All right, well, we have a giveaway. We are giving away the Atlas of Animals Anatomy. Great book. You can't run a business, it, that's, a mammal yeah. business without that's this. You're really going to want it. That's, that's really a good one. All right, and the winner goes to Lucas Schnorr with Luke's Taxidermy. Lucas, oh. you're going to love it. Yeah, yeah. So make sure Very to cool. like and share this yeah. video to be automatically entered into next week's giveaway. Yeah, Tara, like and share. Like and share. Yeah, like and share, like and share. Like and share.